Welcome to Living Destiny Church, where your destiny comes alive. We're located at 550 East Little Creek Road in Norfolk, Virginia. Here at Living Destiny, our mission is to discover, develop, and deploy godly, global, kingdom-minded leaders and disciples of Jesus Christ. You're about to listen to another life-changing message. Get ready for some divine revelation. Here is Rev. Dr. Moses Asamoah, Jr. Somebody say amen. Well, I want to thank Minister Eric. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful word on Sunday. Be contagious. Uh, when I saw the mask, I was like, uh-huh, today is the day. <laughs> Hallelujah. It was a powerful word. Thank you for listening to the body. Really appreciate you and I honor you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Uh, God is good. If you have your Bible, please turn with me to John 3.16. John 3, 16. God's word for you today is radical generosity. Someone say radical generosity. And we all should know this verse because even when we were sinners, we knew this verse. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only... Can we say it together? Ready? Go. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son... That whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. John 3, 16. Sunday school skills, amen. When it comes to radical generosity, it's about describing the heart and the love of God. Someone say, God loves me. That needs to be an established, convincing fact in your life that God loves me. Because many of us have been trained under performance that what I do determines how much God loves me. The Bible says that whilst we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So his love for you is not based on how pure you are. He loved you before you were pure. Somebody say hallelujah. He loved you before you came to him. And because you did not earn his love, you cannot lose his love. Do you hear me, church? Because you did not earn the love of God, you cannot what, lose the love of God. Now, what, 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 what God may not do is, uh, 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 is use you for some things in the kingdom because you have proven to be lazy and lack discipline. You see what I'm saying? You can stay in the house. He will always love you. But when it's time for the meeting, he ain't going to call you in. So there is a consequence to walking in sin. There's a consequence to not walking right with God. But one of the consequences is not that God stops loving you. That is never one of the consequences. And Bible said that for God so loved the world. He loved the cosmos. It is not the earth. The earth is a different word, gay. Um, but this one is a word, is the cosmos. For God loved the government and all of, all of the earth, all of the structure, all of the heavens, all of the earth, everything in it, God loved the greater cosmos. The people in it, the government of it, the hierarchy of it, God loved the easier word is God love the universe. It is greater than just the natural earth. It is greater than the people. It is, it is everything in it. The order of it, God loves the world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever what believes in him should not perish, but have what? Everlasting life. Someone say everlasting life. The word therefore everlasting is aeon, uh, which means eternal. And it's, it's, it's also not just forever, because we know, you know, God loved us forever, right? I'm saved for eternity. That's one thing. But talking about the ages and the various years and the various eternities and the various departments, it's like it's more than just time as in tick-tock, tick-tock. It is the various ages. And I want to expound on this just a little bit because many times we have, we have misunderstood eternal life as to I'll just get there. But Bible says in John 17, 3, and that this is eternal life that they might know you, the one who sent me. So eternal life is not I got my ticket, I am going to heaven. That is part of it. But eternal life is knowing God. And this is, for God so loved the world, 
that he gave his only begotten son and that whosoever believes in him will not perish but will know him but will know him because many of us have already checked our ticket upstairs we're like let's go so our life here is like so so we we are not fully committed to understanding and knowing him and because eternal life is eternal life i can't wait to get there and but to know god now if anyone should boast let him boast that he knows me i count all things but loss that i might know him so whilst people are busy living however they want to li live in order to uh, get to the sweet by and by, you are in the business of knowing God. God loves me and I'm in the business of knowing God. And so when I read my Bible and I pray, it is not a religious duty uh, that people on earth do. Uh, I do it because I want to know him. I do it so that I can have relationship and with him. He's speaking a language that I don't fully understand. And so I spend time with him and this is eternal life. Uh, uh, when we have spirit to spirit interaction, that is eternal life. Not the sweet by and by. That's part of it. But the greater part is that you are joined as one spirit with the Lord. And that you begin to walk in union with God. And so now my holiness and my living righteous and, and me not getting angry or me not, oh, you, you, you get angry but you don't sin, right? Or, 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 or me not walking immorally or lying or cheating is because I do not want to interfere with the spirit to spirit interaction if i do that it's going to stop my knowing god it's going to give us a break and i don't want a break in this relationship i don't want to stop this relationship and so i'm going to keep walking right so that i can have continual fellowship with him someone say hallelujah we are going past religious activity we are going past just things that we were required to do. We are now at a place where we, we, we want to know him. I declare that that is your heart in the name of Jesus. You are not just coming to church and being a Christian because you are just doing the Christian thing. Um, but while people are being religious, you are busy knowing God. And when you realize that you don't know God or you don't know him the way you're supposed to, and then you begin to pay the price and say, my friend, I know you, but you are not helping me in my understanding of eternal life. You wait. I'm going to go spend time with God. I'm going to go love on my God. I'm going to go. It's because when, when God speaks, I don't hear clearly. And that is a problem. I know your number. You will always call me. And I know where you live. Wait a minute. Let me go to connect with my God. That is eternal life. And the pursuit of that love relationship with God. What unfortunately has happened to that is that many of us has been, have been taught that that is doing too much. Right? Why are you always praying? Why are you always worshiping? Every time we look at you, you listen to Christian music and you are in worship. Why, 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 why? But what else do you want me to do? Like what, what is the alternative to seeking God? Is it watching the game? Hanging with you at a party? going shopping gossiping like what option are you presenting me that is greater than knowing god may that be your pursuit in the name of jesus may that be your daily pursuit that lord i have eternal life and this eternal life is knowing you uh, lord god i want to know you more i want to know you more because there's nothing else worth living for than to know him. Somebody say amen. I want to give you the ingredients of radical generosity. We prayed it a lot throughout the fast, but I want to give you a few specific things. The ingredients of radical generosity. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. When it comes to radical generosity, you give your best. Someone say, I give my best. Say Say, say it, buddy, like you already do it. Say, I give my best. Uh huh. Because many a time when we give things to people, we give them the leftovers. I pray that that, that, that changes today. If what you are giving me, 
you won't give to yourself. Don't give it. Because otherwise, you have, you have already condemned the other person. Somebody say hallelujah. Now, I understand giving things to, uh, what's the name, um, the thrift stores and being a blessing because someone can use it. That one is not a direct, direct. You just say, bless you, and then walk away. But I'm saying that if I come to give you something, and in my mind, psh, this, is, this is, Charlie, I don't like it. I don't need it. It's not good enough for me. Then don't give it. Because God gave his fear. I'm talking about radical generosity. It is good to be generous. But when it comes to radical generosity, you give your very best. Abraham came. It didn't work. Isaac came. It didn't work. Jacob came. David came. It didn't work. God said, I got to give my best. His only begotten son. The best. He gave of himself. When you are blessed, when, when, when you are in the service of God and you want to be radically generous to God, give your best. I'm not talking about just money only. Yes, give of your increase. Yes, but give the best of your heart. If the worship team is what it takes to get the best worship out of you, you are not generous. Come on, bless him, bless him. Come on, give him your best worship. We have to do it because sometimes you don't. Almost every Sunday, somebody doesn't. But when it comes to my God, when it comes to, can you, uh, can you boldly say in your service of God today that you are giving him your best? Beyond church, in your service and your commitment to God, is it your best or is it after you have figured everything out? Oh, I got two hours. I think... I will serve God with it. Or is he the center of your life? Because many of us have put other relationships above God. But I've taught you here uh, since um, last year, when the higher covenant calls, the lesser must submit. But unfortunately, we have flipped it, people of God. We have flipped it. And we are more... How do I say this? We get more upset when the lesser covenant offends us. And we interrupt our greater covenant because the boss made me mad. So we come to church. I'm mad at my boss. I don't like this job. And so God is punished. You don't give him your best because of what somebody else did. I'm going to give God my best. Listen, something got to come in. Shake it off. Because you don't always feel like you are human. You don't always feel like it. But you must get enough feeling like it. This is my best worship. And as I give you my best worship, I'm getting better and better and better. Of your time, are you giving your best unto God? Hey, hallelujah. Talk about radical generosity. And I know he has come to the church, help, serve, be in a ministry. You already know that. So I'm not going to emphasize that. But I, can, I, can I just help you here? When it comes to your Bible study and your personal time with God, is it the best time? I'm just trying to help you. Okay? You can do morning, you can do afternoon, you can do evening. That's on you. But that time you are giving to him. Is it? I'm going to read my Bible. But the time that you are most alert, Instagram, the time that you are most alert, girl, let's go, boy, let's go. Like you are giving your best strength and your best time to other people. But when it comes to God, that, 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 that evil phrase, God understands. Are you giving your best time to God? Make sure that when you, are, when, you, when, you, when you get time to spend with God, you are alert. Holy Spirit, fresh. Talk to me. This time is for you. And I taught you on Tuesday nights, put the phone aside. It is an interruption. Put the phone aside. Don't let anybody interrupt your time with God. How do you feel when you're having a conversation and somebody cuts in and starts talking? You, you don't like it. But we think it's okay 
to be in fellowship with God and let somebody just walk in and yap about something stupid that has no connection to God. Let me help you again. It's like work, but it applies to your time with God. When you are in the presence of God, talk about the waves and momentum. You are connecting, you are ascending. You're ascending, right? You are, your, your spirit is breaking off the flesh and the cares of the world, and you are casting your cares upon him, and you, are, and you are breaking forth. The moment you are about to get into a realm where your spirit begins to connect and your ears are now fine-tuned to the right level, the interruption that comes does not only interrupt your, your momentum, it sets you back. Because now, when you come back, You've already lost 15 minutes. And so now you got to chuku chaka chaka chuku chaka chaka chuku chaka chuku chaka again, build up and come to that place. And then once you get to that place, then you have to say, God, what were we talking about? You've had revelation from God, but something came and distracted you. You did not write it down. You said, oh, I will remember this dream. And you woke up and you said, hey, I forgot it. You were driving and the deep word of the Holy Spirit came to you. And you did not record it because it was interrupted. Now, up to today, you are praying and crying. God, please say it again. You cannot remember it. It's gone. And your heart feels like, mm, because it was good. The thief cometh not but to steal, to kill. To give God your very best, you have to be intentional about it. So radical generosity. Number one, give God the best. Give your very best to people. Do you know people might even appreciate it even more if you tell them, you know what, I'm not 100% today. Can we continue tomorrow? So that when you give them your very best, you are present. Somebody say Amen. All right, number two, Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5, verse 1. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have access by faith into the grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance. Please stop it right there, verse 3. Uh-huh. And not only that, but we also glory in what? We glory in what? Knowing that tribulation produces perseverance. God is working something. Listen, if you are going to walk with God, spirit to spirit, he has to transform you into his image. He has to refine your capacity to handle the things that he handles. And because when God takes you to the next level, you go and say, oh God, this is too much. I can't take it. Then you will pull back. So he must prepare you and he uses trials. Someone say trials. Listen, not everything is of the devil. They are God-initiated processes that are painful. He starts it. He said, you cause men to walk over our heads. You cause me to go into the net. You, God will set you up. You understand? I pray that you, you, you are, you are God, oh God is a good God. He's a good God, so he has to whoop the foolishness out of our heart. And so you bring tribulation to push that out. Nothing makes you pray more than tribulation. Mm-hmm. If everything was all right, your prayer would become, thank you, Lord, see you later. But because of that tribulation, you are fasting, you are praying, you are studying the word because now you need him. Yeah. And so he will initiate him. Listen, I promise you, child of God, it is not always the devil. It is God promoting you. And in order to be promoted, you have to be broken and re-put back together. So we, we glory in tribulation. Knowing that tribulation gives me long endurance. Listen, there are some things that the devil will bring to you right now that doesn't offend you anymore. There are some things people do right now that doesn't even shake you. But five years ago, Jesus, pastor, we have a meeting. Like it upsets you, you can't sleep, you can't think, you can't even worship God because you're offended. But today, it has no effect on you because you have built perseverance. And perseverance builds character. 
Mm -hmm. Character is who you are when no one is looking. It's easy to be hype and excited when, oh, whew, I'm glad they are gone. Now I can be myself. That is not character. Character is who you are always. Or character is what you should be always instead of the, the, the part that you show us. But perseverance will refine your character. Mm, talking about giving your best to God. Perseverance will refine your character and your character will give you hope. Let's go on verse 5. Now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. For when we were still without strength in due time, Christ died for who? He died for who? Ah, for scarcely a righteous man will die, yet perhaps a, for a good man, someone will even dare to die. But God demonstrated his love towards us, that whilst we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. When it comes to radical generosity, number two is sacrifice. You have to give to people you don't like. You will have to serve people you don't like. And don't pretend you like everybody. No, you don't like everybody. Some people you intentionally avoid. And the church said, uh -huh. for you see, sometimes it's just for the sake of your own peace. Charlie, I don't want trouble. I just want to go. So you find a way peacefully out of it. You don't like everybody. You have enemies, don't you? Uh -huh. people, the ones that you, you, you started... And the ones that you didn't start. Amen. Not every enemy is just random. Some things you started it. <laughs> Got to go and make it right. The fight was started by you. Uh -huh, so you make it right. But whilst we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. If you are going to be radically generous, your heart capacity and your character must get to the point where you are able to pray for your enemies. And forgive them. Forgive those who despitefully use you. Sacrifice is needed in radical generosity. Many of us have limited our life because we are unable to break past what somebody else has done or what somebody else is doing. Whilst we were yet sinners, says that maybe for a good man, someone might maybe die. But for a sinner, definitely. I'm, I'm, I'm not dying. Are you dying? Are you going to die for a sinner? Someone who hurt you, you know. Actually, the, the word there was, was, was uh, uh, in, in, in great hostility. Like obvious, like against you. That, uh, like they are against you and they are attacking you and they are rebellious. Would you die for somebody like that? Even for your brother, cry. you're like, I'll pray about it. I don't know. Is there God? If, if it's possible... <laughs> Let us cap. <laughs> Let us cap. God will make another way. But for a sinner, for somebody who is intentionally opposed to you, we will not die. Guaranteed, we will not die. I mean, I pray for you that God help you, but to be served will push you to serve your enemies. We want to be like Jesus. Don't we? If we want to be like Jesus, then the cost of being like Jesus is, is ministering and loving, and even not, not, not just loving them or not just serving them, um, but back to point number one, giving them your best. When someone you don't like in church, that sounds horrible, but it is so. Or someone has offended you in church. And pastor in his craziness says, turn around to somebody and pray for them. <laughs> Father. <laughs> Not every good Lord, touch me. <laughs> Lord, help me. Because you have nothing good to say. How much more for your enemies to pray for them? And to stand in their place and say, Father, let your power come upon them. Let your glory be upon them. Lord God, uh, touch them. Lord, change them. Lord, strengthen them. Listen, it takes capacity to get there. But radical generosity requires sacrifice. I want to sacrifice. 
that God demonstrated his love towards us, that whilst we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Next verse. Much more than having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For we, for if when we were what? Enemies, we were reconciled. You were an enemy of God. Do you understand that? Oh, today you are saved and sanctified, so you think you are all that. Um, but listen, you were an enemy of God. When somebody talked about Jesus, you got mad. When your father said, let's pray, let's pray, let's go to church, you hated them. You did not like all those Christians. Mm-hmm. Testimony right there. I'm talking about radical generosity here. Allowing your heart capacity to be built to the point where your enemy falling does not put a smile on your face. (laughs) That was powerful. (laughs) When you see your... (laughs) That's what you get. Oh, are you okay? <laughs> Somebody say hallelujah. Because you want, you, you want your heart capacity to be great. The gap between us and God was too great to be worth his radical generosity. If you were God, all humankind would be dead by now. Let me say one more time. If you were God, all humankind would have been wiped off by now. Yeah, mm-mm. I ain't got time for that. Zap, mm-mm. zap, zap. <laughs> Man, you and your, your whole family, you look like your daddy, all of you. Zap. <laughs> Everybody got to go. You will be God by yourself. Ha, peace. But God showed us his love. Somebody say amen. So number one, radical generosity, give your best. Number two, sacrifice. Let's go to Matthew 14. Matthew chapter 14, verse number 13. Bible said that when Jesus heard it, he departed from there by boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the multitude heard it, they followed him on foot from the cities. He was trying to have a time with God, just quiet time, just rest a little bit. But church folk followed him all the way outside the city. Verse 14, and when Jesus went out, he saw a great multitude and he was moved with compassion for them. And healed their sick. Radical generosity. The next one is compassion. Someone say compassion. Child of God, your heart is too tough. In the name of of, of righteousness, you have zero compassion. You will beat people up with the word of God. Before they even understand who God is. Now, what's happening to me? What did I do wrong? And you, die, you don't care. You don't get it. You just whoop him. Anybody ever get a whooping without explanation? Hallelujah. Yeah. Put yourself in that place. You're like, what did I do? Daddy. Yeah. Right? Like, what did I do? Like, you are trying, like, really to process what you did wrong. Maybe because you did it, I mean, you forgot about it. But in the moment, it's not fair. But walk in radical generosity. There must be a compassion in your heart that even in the point of your greatest weakness, in the point of your vulnerability, in the point where I have given all of me, there's nothing else to do. Compassion will give you the ability to relate to others. Compassion will give you when you see them. Bible said that he saw them like a sheep without a shepherd. He had compassion on them and said, I cannot let this go by. That is what it will take for you to walk in radical generosity. I'm talking about in your daily life. If somebody says, Let's go one step, Bible says, Go a whole yard with them. If they take one government, give them your whole cloak. Go beyond what you would do in the natural. Be, be, have great customer service. Can I put it that way? Have great customer service. 
it is not your fault but i apologize you know what we will make this right how are you feeling today and you have your suit on and you are looking very nice um, but somebody has a flat tire and somebody's going through a hard day and you are willing to take off your jacket in order to help and to cover instead of being like the priest who saw the goods uh, who saw the 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 the, the, the guy who was beat by the robbers and says, excuse me, I got to go to church. Man. Ah, the Lord keep you though. She said, who is my neighbor? The one that came and nursed. Took him to the inn. Paid for his care. Said, if it cost any more, let me know. Compassion. Putting yourself in that place. If I was there, what would I want them to do for me? Do that. You hear me, church? If I was going through something, how would I want to be treated? Do unto others as you want them to do unto you. Hey, married people, do unto your spouse what you wanted to do for you. That's one thing I don't don't understand in marriage. Married people, you do something. Then your spouse is mad. Now you are angry at why they are mad. Hey, my friend. You forgot what you did. <laughs> you understand? It's, like, it's always like, I can't believe you were so mad. I mean, you could have been a little mad, but now you are so mad. Allow me to respond the way I want to respond. Do unto others. I, 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 I give this example and I pray that you married people, you get it. And those of you who desire to be married, get it. Yes, come. Josh is married. Hallelujah. All right, so give me, give me level. Okay, so Josh does good, right? And in my heart, I say, I am going to show the love of God, the radical generosity of God. So I'm going to do better, more than you did for me. Then Josh is like, really? You think you can show the love of God more than I can? Let's go. Oh, really? I'm going to show you the love of God. Where is the marriage going? (laughs) But married people. Eh. So I called you yesterday, and you were talking to your friend. You didn't think I was worth you interrupting your conversation to pick up my call. Well, I would not do that. He gets mad and said, are you really going to be upset about that? It was just a phone call. I was going to call you right back. Watch this. He goes down. Oh, I was about to apologize and come back up. But because you went down, guess what? I'm also going. That's what happens in marriage. We are so caught. Thank you, Josh. We are so caught up in, in us being justified that we don't have compassion. You, no, no. What you deserve is the judgment of God. You, your God must check you because if you keep going that way, you will lose your anointing. So I must show you the cost of the anointing. I must let you know and feel the weight of your sin because God and I are one. <laughs> Someone say compassion. Compassion. Be in their shoes. And I always say, give the benefit of the doubt. There's, there's a 1% chance that what you saw and what you heard is not what you saw and not what you heard. Seriously, and most of the time, and I'm and now this for everybody, but my people, most of the time, what your wife is saying is not what you are hearing. Wife, what your husband is saying is not what you are hearing. I, I, and yesterday, I was tired, and this happened, and I can't believe that. And he didn't call, and the children this, and the children that. All of that, I want a hug. <laughs> All that sentence equals, hold me. And you are upset. You know, I didn't do that. Now, now, now you, the, you, you, you the lawyer. <laughs> Everything they said, you were recording it. Chronological order. Well, first of all, <laughs> number one, I didn't do that. <laughs> number two, and they are like, oh, you are not getting me. Oh, so now I don't, hold on. Number 17. And I, that, when all they are saying is, hold me. Compassion will break through all that mess and relate to the heart. Because if we were Jesus, church was closed at one o'clock. I've gone to my house to retreat. 
why, why, why are the church folk coming to my house? <laughs> Don't they know we are in America? <laughs> you call before you show up. Uh -huh. And so they come to your house, and then Jesus comes and says, oh, they are here. He could have said, church is closed. Go home. But he ministered unto them. I'm not saying come to my house. I'm not saying that. <laughs> but I'm saying that compassion will push you to go past your limitations. And that is radical generosity. Somebody say amen. You're almost there. John chapter 10. John 10 verse 17. God wants to do something, so I'm going to go faster here. John 10, 17. Therefore, my father loves me because I lay down my life that I may take it again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. The command I have received, this is the command I have received from my father. The next, the next ingredient to radical generosity is choice. Someone say choice. I choose to love you. I choose to give to you. Someone say, I choose. Uh -huh. Make that decision before the people need it. I choose to. My mind is made up. I, I, I choose. Listen, I can take up my life. I can lay it down. I can do whatever I want to do with it. But I choose to give it to you. Money, I need it. I can find something nice to do for myself with this. But I choose to bless you with it. My time, I could be doing something else, but I choose to give it to you. The reason why you are angry and resentful is because you feel like people are taking from you. And every time somebody is taking from you, it is never fun. Like, I was going to give it to you anyway, but because you try to take it, I won't give it to you anymore. Because it feels like the control is taken away from you. I want to give it to you. You don't take it. Uncle Sam didn't get the verse. They take their money whenever they want to take it. Because they don't trust you, first of all. God, how many of you know you would not pay taxes if Uncle Sam said, please pay later? <laughs> Someone say, I choose. Say, I choose. I choose. When you have made up your mind that I will give to you, whether you came and you asked for it, whether you came and you took it, whether I gave it to you or not, my mind, I was born to give. I have planted myself in the place of generosity. I will give to you. You don't deserve it, but I'll give it to you. I will give you my very best, even though you are my enemy. I see you struggling and you deserve exactly what you are going through, but I will give. Someone say hallelujah. This level of love is beyond, oh my God, you bought me something, I'll buy you something. Too. Oh my God, it's so nice. It's, good. it's beyond that. We have fun together. Talking about people that you may not necessarily want to have fun with, but God says bless and you bless. Someone say I choose. From this day forth, you know what? Let me tell you this story. My former pastor shares it all the time. He said that they were saying that one of her, her daughters was taking advantage of, of him. You don't know what she's doing to you. She always comes and asking for this and asking for that and taking from you. And I'll never forget his response. He said, whatever she takes, I have already given to her. People were hoping. She'd be like, oh, really? She will take advantage of me? That is, hmm, you know what? I should have a talk with her. She's like, forget that conversation. I'm not going to, first of all, invite you into my family life. Stay out. Secondly, I have already chosen to give. Child of God, position yourself in the place. I have already chosen to give. Listen, Jesus said I was born to be sacrificed. Do you understand that? I was born to be sacrificed. And so when they are taking him, it's like, ah, this is what I was born for. I, I give freely. And some people are aggressive in their asking. Hey, some people ask so aggressively, you can't think anymore. Wait, what, what is supposed to happen? It's gone. Don't be like that person. Hallelujah. But I want to challenge you. Someone say, I choose. 
I pray this sinks into your spirit. I choose. I choose because you are angry right now because you feel like they didn't ask you before they did it. They didn't ask you. What, my opinion doesn't matter? Don't you care about? Get to the point where I choose. I choose. I cho like it's yours. I choose to give it. My heart and my service and my commitment, I choose to give it. Listen, I made the decision before you acted wrong. And I'm not going to change my mind. I can take back my affection. I can take back my gift. I can take back my presence. I can punish you and let you know this is the consequence of what you did and withdraw my affection from you. But I have already made up my mind uh, to give it. This is the scary part of it, right? That when somebody knows that you have made up your mind to give, now you are no longer in control of how they act. Because for a, for a while, and sometimes, and for a season, they will come and say, Haha, I know your decision. I will do whatever I want to do. What you going to do about it? And you have to hold your place. I still choose. Mm -hmm. God says, I choose to forgive you. I choose to love you. And because you know there is forgiveness at the end of the road, you say, Father, forgive me for the sin I am about to commit. You order a special order of forgiveness at the end. So after sin, Jesus, we talked about this. How do you think God feels? The reason why we are not afraid of sin is because we know there's the grace of forgiveness. Because God has chosen to forgive us. If you knew that the wages of sin was you literally being struck dead, 99.9% .9 of the things you do, you will stop. But because we know that he has chosen to always love us. Someone say, I choose. I choose to give. And can I, can we just say to this before I move on? People will take advantage of you. Settle that. Stop acting shocked. Oh my God. I can't believe it. Right me. They will. It's expected. Don't be surprised by it. Give anyways. Somebody say hallelujah. All right. The last point here. Luke chapter 22. Um, Luke, Luke 23. Hey, time is going. Luke 23 verse 34. Luke, to, Luke chapter 23 verse 34. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. Someone say forgiveness. To walk in radical generosity, you must walk in radical forgiveness. On the cross, forgive me, Father, for they know not what they do. No, 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 no. We say, Father, let fire rain upon them. Because that joker knew exactly what he was doing. We talked about it, and they still did it. Again. Let fire Mm -hmm. Because first apology, mm -hmm. maybe you didn't know. Second time, we've talked about this. Third time, I knew you thought about it. You were calculated and you totally ignored my feelings and you did whatever you wanted to do. So you have to work harder to earn my forgiveness. But radical generosity says, Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. Father, forgive them. Father, forgive them. Come on, say, Lord, I forgive them. Even if they knew what they were doing, because they, they put you on the cross. They brought you to the high priest and to Pilate, spat on you, caused you to be beat, put, put crowns on your head, stabbed you, yelled at you, joked you and everything. They did it. But Father, forgive them, for they know not what they are doing. 
and the, and the, and the way, and if, if I can just steal that revelation a little bit, is that now, instead of being upset at them, you start saying, wow, I have become a master of the cross. Wow, okay, now I'm good at dying. Listen, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it abides alone. You think you are doing something to offend me, but I thank you. You don't know what you're doing. What's really happening is that I'm becoming more like Christ. I am being perfected in my faith. I am growing more. I'm getting stronger. And so what is supposed to destroy me is actually building up my faith. And so when the enemy does it or people do things, in the moment you are like, whew, then you say, Father, I thank you. Because all things will work together for the good of them that love the Lord. I am going to get stronger because of what you are doing. Many of us had to be rejected to understand the love of God. We had to be kicked out to walk in the fullness of God's plan for us. You wouldn't have your business if your boss didn't fire you. You won't walk in the level of anointing when those that were closest to you had stayed with you. God broke you out. I'm not saying it was right. I'm not saying it was fun. But something good is going to come out of this. Something good is going to come out of it. Something good must come out of this. So I choose and I quickly forgive. Quickly forgive. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. I was sharing with, with, with one of my sons today the one thing that God did for me, and I hope he helps you. I was offended. Rightfully offended. Justified offended. Evidence offended. Have a list offended, <laughs> ready for a meeting <laughs> offended. It wasn't my fault offended. You feel me? Like the whole world knows you are right, they know you are right, God knows you are right, the devil knows you are right, and so you are right to be angry. And then God clearly, I wish I brought my notebook here, son. You did not lose anything. Whatever I wanted you to have and whatever I wanted you to be, you still are. So I lost nothing. So am I not losing anything? Why am I still offended? And even with that situation, even made me Better with God. So forgive quickly. Somebody say amen. Last one, Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Hey Jesus, who thought preaching would take so long? Hey. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. But you shall receive what? Power. When the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. When it comes to radical generosity, it's about empowerment. Someone say empowerment. Say empowerment. The fact that God will take us from sinners, cleanse us, put his name upon us, give us his spirit and his power, that is mighty generous. You know how much of a heathen you were. You were a class A heathen. Hallelujah. You were a bona fide registered heathen. Hallelujah. And for God to take you from all that you were, wash you, forgive you, purge you, whilst you were still doing this in the house of the Lord, and still say, I will give you my spirit. And my spirit will live inside of you, around you, and guide you. That is radical generosity. So what does that mean to you? That means... That you give to people to empower them. Don't give so they are dependent on you. Mm, that's a whole different preaching. Hallelujah. Don't give so that they are dependent on you. 
That means he gives us a little bit. He said, if, if, if you want more, come, call me. Oh, I can't do it today. Call, call me Tuesday. The person is at your mercy. That's what we do. Stop it. Stop making people have to beg. No, no, no. No more begging. Mm, mm. Mm. Love that. Don't do that. Don't make people what? Dependent on you. He gave us his spirit and said, go. And he said, greater works shall you do. Go, heal the sick. Like, you go and do what I am doing. My spirit is with you. Go get it done. Instead of rationing things and making people dependent on us. You know how people get dependent on us? We don't give them our best and we don't give them the information we have. So, uh, so uh, Josh, how do, I, how, do I, how do I begin this business? Well, you know, it's online. Just go research. Online. <laughs> Just go research. Okay, so... so, so um, I, I narrowed it down that you know what, there's, there's, there, there are companies in China that do this. So, which one do you use? Oh, they are all good. Hey! <laughs> like, we want to make sure the person <laughs> doesn't get what we know. So, they are always dependent on you. Don't... <laughs> Don't do that. Give the fullness. This one I get it. This one I do. So I do you know what? And if you know what, I know. Yeah, yeah, here's the number of my accountant and my lawyer and my this. If you need help, call them. They will help you. That is how you walk in radical generosity. Not giving with a chain and where you can pull back and the person's life falls down because they are dependent on you. Somebody say Hallelujah. So give generously. Amen. And so God, I want you to declare after me. Say, God radically loves me. God has, does, and will always love me. God gives me his best always. God is compassionate towards me. I am forgiven of all my sins. Whenever I repent, God always forgives me. God chose, chooses, and will always choose me. God loves me so much, he lives in me. God loves me so much, he gave me his spirit and his power to be like him. So give your best. Sacrifice willingly without expecting a reward be compassionate and non-judgmental how did you get in this situation anyways none of your business if you're going to be compassionate be compassionate choose to serve and love others forgive quickly without limit and without distinction empower others to be great by sharing what you love what you have please stand up on your feet Thanks for watching. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share. If this message blessed you, click these videos to watch more. God bless, and we'll see you next week.